Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. It's been over a year since the large March 18th, 2020 magnitude 5.7 earthquake has occurred. Today there was a magnitude 3.2 earthquake. It was a little more than 11 miles east of Providence, Utah. This 3.2 earthquake should be a reminder for those of you there along the Wasatch fault zone that it is due for a very large earthquake after that magnitude uh, 5.7 in March of last year there was over 2,590 aftershocks. The largest aftershock was a magnitude 4.6 and a 4.2 that one occurred on April the same year. Using Google Earth, here's the location of that 5.7, and we'll bring it out, show you this fault zone, and we'll go to the location of today's earthquake. A little bit farther north, there was actually probably a foreshock before this 3.3. Um, it was revised to a 3.2. USGS does use felt reports to determine uh, the magnitude of an earthquake and often will revise it down because not very many people report the earthquake. Here was more than likely a foreshock of a 1.3. This earthquake had an intensity level of uh, 3. This here is the image of the earthquake as it came in at Pinedale, Wyoming. Here is the felt reports with an intensity level of 3 come from Logan, Utah. There was five reports. Uh, Providence, Utah. One response there. Uh, intensity level of two, which would be very light shaking. Another area of Logan, Utah had four responses of very light shaking. Now there was an intensity level of three from Randolph, Utah. Smithfield, Utah. Intensity level of two had two responses. Franklin, Idaho. There was one response, very light shaking, intensity level one. Ogden, Utah. One response there, um, light, re light shaking. And Clearfield, Utah. One response from there, light shaking. I would suspect that maybe only one to ten percent of the people that feel earthquake actually bother to report it to USGS responses compared to um, time and we got what 20 minutes 40 minutes 60 minutes let me bring this over for you they evidently didn't put all the responses because they have one all the way up here a total of 15 responses here uh, within so that would be a little over two hours with 15 responses. Uh, 12 within, let me bring this down for you. 12 within 140 minutes, uh, 120 minutes, 10. Um, eight responses uh, shortly after an hour. I'll pull this over. The first 20 minutes they had four responses. Uh, maybe about 30 minutes, six responses, 40 minutes, seven responses. See, a lot of people are working, so it takes them a while. Let me pull this over to find the time and find the location where they're supposed to respond for earthquakes. And here we have the intensity versus distance. Um, we'll go to green. This is in kilometers. Red and that's all they have but you can see it's above three 3.1 um, intensity 2 intensity 2.7 that was let's bring this down and the distance of course yeah 73 kilometers intensity level of two so they do now have 16 responses listed on the page as many of you that follow me know any earthquake 
has the probability of 20% of being a foreshock for something much larger. In this case, it was a 3.3 or a 3.2. There is a lot of subduction going on, I have noticed of late, from ancient tectonic plates sliding underneath the United States and creating earthquakes. Up over here, we have Bear Lake. This fault zone goes all the way up to Yellowstone. Here you can see the North American plate sliding west. I've talked about that. And I'll bring this out. It's an area of Gavin's uh, mountain building, part of what they call the Wyoming Thrust Zone, which goes all the way up to the Snake River Plateau. Yeah, and Yellowstone. Uh, the black line drawn out is the uplift rate of Yellowstone Supervolcano um, as of 2015. Now, this Eastern Bear Lake Fault, it is an old fault zone, very ancient. Uh, north trending, it says, grabbing, straddling Utah and Idaho. And I showed you the direction that the plate, the fault zone is moving westward. West dipping normal fault bounding the east side of Bear Lake Valley in Utah and Idaho. The fault is part of a belt of faulting forming a right stepping and echelon pattern from the northern Wasatch Range in Utah to the Yellowstone area in Wyoming. As displacement on the Wasatch Fault Zone diminishes and is separated by the north trending fault farther east, such as the east and west cache, the eastern Bear Lake Fault Zones, etc., there's a web page, Geology Wyoming, that, show, that shows this thrust belt. It is really a fascinating, um, a great image. Look at the folds in those mountains. This event was caused by the east dipping subduction of oceanic plates along the western margin of North America. The Wyoming salient bulge in the thrust belt extends from the Snake River Plateau. Let me move this over for you. Or Snake River Plain into Idaho, into Utah, and is 100 miles in length and up to 60 miles wide. And they have an image of this um, subduction zone through this uh, area. The Rocky Mountains are in the foreground, it says. During the past 10,000 years, major earthquakes of magnitude 7 or greater occur about every 900 to 1,300 years along one of the five central segments of the Wasatch Fault Zone. However, the average time span between earthquakes along the entirety of the central segment is about 300 years. The segment that underlines Salt Lake City produces a major earthquake approximately every 1,200 to 1,300 years ago. Um, Weber, Provo, and Nephi segments each produce about uh, 200 to 700 years ago. And the Brigham City Fault segment hasn't produced a major earthquake in about 2,200 to 2,800 years. Both of these earthquakes, the foreshock of the magnitude 1.3 and the revised 3.3, are not far from Brigham City. There's its location right there. Can you see that? Now, they know that any large earthquake could probably produce an earthquake along the multiple strands that go through here. And I've talked about the Great Salt Lake and the tipping effect in different areas that I have drawn out in blue that would probably all flood during a major earthquake. Can you see that light color line of blue? Yeah, it encompasses the uh, airport. Um, let's see, let's zoom in a little bit. Highway uh, 215, Highway 80, Highway 15. Yeah, it goes all the way up, all the way up. Not much developed up over here by Browns Island and Goose Island. Um, 
yeah, this would all be flooded out if there's a large earthquake. They know um, they would have liquid faction and the lake would tip, <laughs> yeah, draining towards the uh, southeast. It was probably about a year ago, maybe two years ago, I did a report about this. If they have a large earthquake, what would happen with this area? We got Murray, we got Salt Lake City, uh, Magna, West Valley City, Taylorsville. Um, yeah. Much of the younger generation has not prepared for a large earthquake, uh, mostly because they haven't gone through um, anything where they would have to do extensive rebuilding and, yeah, start over again. The older you are, the more things you've gone through, and so most older people are probably prepared for a disaster in most cases, at least to some extent. Yeah, and this area is way overdue for a magnitude 7 or greater earthquake. Are you prepared? If not, you should start getting ready today, tomorrow. Sooner the better. Yeah, bolt things to the wall. Uh, don't forget the pets in your emergency supply kits have extra food and water and medical supplies. I have suggested pet carriers because if there is a large disaster and you need to go to a shelter, um, you're going to need a pet carrier before they'll allow you to bring your um, loved ones in. Yeah, your loved ones, your pets. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, please thumbs up my videos. Thank you for your support. I'm also on Twitter and I'm also on Patreon if you wish to support my work. Please stay safe and I will talk to you later. God bless you.